Hi, this is James from Titan Drones. Today we're going to show you how to modify an Inspire 2 remote controller. You're going to want a utility knife, a 9mm wrench, your nylon removal tools or picks, a small flathead, number 2 Phillips head, T6 Torx screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and flush cutters. Then you're gonna want your install kit, uh, which comes with your internal cables, um, which is MMCX male to QMA. Your QMA plugs, which we'll get to. And uh, we provide pre-cut double-sided tape to, to apply your bumpers back. And then in this particular instance, uh, we're gonna be showing the Conquer bracket. Alright, step one, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove um, the rubber pads that are covering the screws on the bottom. You'll have two of these. Next, you're going to remove the rubber bumpers. This is where you want to use your nylon remover tool. You're just trying not to mar the plastic. You can just peel back the factory tape and discard it. You don't need to try to save it because we provide you with pre-cut tape to replace them with. Now you're going to take your Phillips head and you're going to loose or actually remove the four screws around the perimeter. Next you're going to take your T6 Torx screwdriver and remove the four screws around the I.O. plate. Once your screws have been removed, you're going to take your nylon removal tool and pry around the perimeter until you get that plastic plate off. All right, if you're used to modifying Inspire 1 RCs, you'll notice um, that this is a little bit different. You're going to have uh, three screws that we're going to want to remove and three ribbon cables. So you have a screw here, screw here, screw here. Get a ribbon cable here, your main ribbon cable here, and another ribbon cable here. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove or unlock the header lock on all three of the ribbon cables. And what you do is you pry them towards you or up towards the sky, and that's how you know they're unlocked. It's just the little black retaining tab there. There's also one on each of the small ribbon cables as well. All right, now you're going to take your needle nose pliers and gently pull out your ribbon cables. Now you're going to take a Phillips head and remove the three screws. It's always good to have a plastic bin handy to keep all your parts in. Now we go to remove the board and you'll notice that the bottom ribbon cable will pull out, giving you more room to wiggle it out of its housing. And then you just set that aside for now. All right, now you're going to separate the clamshell. What you're going to do is you're going to find the parting line and you're going to gently pull apart. Once you have your clamshell separated, you're going to undo your battery connector. Next step is going to remove the power cable for this fan here. 
you take your needle and nose pliers and you gently pull out on the connector. Right, next, there are three screws that secure this heat sink. You're going to want to remove those. Now you're going to pry up the heat sink. Now just take note that you want to be careful here. It's held down with some thermal paste. Now you're going to want to remove the seven connections on the board. There's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you have all your cables unhooked, you're going to want to unscrew this one retaining screw here. All right, you're going to gently remove the main board. This is going to give you the room you need to pry out your antenna connections. Next, we're going to remove these two scroll wheel assemblies. That's going to give us some more room to push our cables through. Now that the scroll wheel assemblies are out of the way, you see we can easily get to the antenna wires there. Similar to the Inspire 1 or even the Phantom series, the antennas are held in with these little retainer clips. Um, so you're going to want to squeeze those together. All right, once you've re released the factory retainer clip, now you can pull out the antenna. Now you're going to want to take our QMA cables and go ahead and unscrew the nut. Take off the lock washer. You're going to want to encapsulate them into our QMA plugs. It's a clamshell design. For now, you're going to want to replace it with just the nut. You're left with something like that. All right, now that you've assembled both of your cables, you're going to want to feed it in. Same hole you took the factory antennas out. What we try to do is we try to run the cables along the same path as the factory cables. All right, now that you've fished your cable through, you can push in the QMA plug. Similar to factory, you're gonna have a little retaining barb right there. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And go. Next, you're gonna replace your scroll wheel assemblies.
now reinstall the other side. Now you're going to take your main board and you're going to plug in your new connections. You should hear a snap. Now we're going to re reinstall the main board. Make sure all of your ribbon cable connections don't get stuck under the board. You want to line up the board on your factory standoffs. Now you're going to replace the factory screw. I'm going to help you hold it in place a little bit. Now reconnect all your ribbon cables. Remember there were seven of them. Alright, after your seven ribbon cables are reattached, you are going to reinstall the heat sink and fan. Then you reattach the power cable. Now we're going to reconnect the battery connector. And we're going to fish the main COM board cable through. And you should hear snapping as it goes back together. Now you're going to take your I.O. board and reconnect your ribbon cable first or else you're probably not going to have enough room after the fact. So you're going to push in your connector all the way up to the white line and then push down on the retaining clip. In this case you're going to push forward to make it go down. Now you're going to reconnect the ribbon cables around the perimeter and reinstall the factory screws. Now we replace the back I.O. plate. Reinstall the four T6 Torx screws. Now we install the four Phillips head screws around the perimeter. Alright, your kit will come with uh, double sided tape that's pre cut to fix these bumpers. Next, peel off the other side. And you can reinstall.
and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now you'll reinstall the rubber bumpers that cover the two Phillips head screws on the bottom. Now if you got the command case, you're actually all set. Um, you're ready to go just how it is. Uh, if you ordered the Conquer or any of the RC mounted versions, you'll get this bracket with it. Um, and I'll show you how to install that. It's just one simple step. First, you're gonna remove this flat head that holds down your tablet holder. Then you're gonna undo the two nuts on your QMA plug. Now you're gonna take your Conquer mounting bracket You're going to slide it into place and we provide a longer screw here so gives you a nice finished look you're going to tighten that down it is a t30 and now all you do is replace your qma nuts And now you're ready for the Conquer or any of our other RC mounted antenna systems.